do something slightly different now, something brand new for us. Uh, last uh, Our last musical appearance here on OTBAM was Rodrigo y Gabriela at the back end of last year, so absolutely no pressure at all on our next guest who we're going to talk to in a moment. But before all of that, he's allowing us to uh, launch his new single, The Game That We Love. This is Stuart Byrne. Take a listen. Uh, it's called The Game That We Love. It's by Stuart Byrne, and he is on the line. Good morning to you, Stuart. Morning, Nathan. How are you? How did that feel? That's cracking. Um, it feels really nice, yeah. Now it, it, it's it's a very nostalgic song. Um, I'm sort of staring out the, win <laughs> the window here as I listen to it, and that's pretty much what the song is about, you know. Um, it's very... Um, very nostalgic, um, I suppose, when you're considering the year that we've had. Uh, God, everything's gone through your head at the moment, isn't it, really? And you really just try to cling on to some of the things that you just miss. And I just miss that. I just miss playing football on the road with my mates when I was a kid. Not a care in the world, no complications. Um, and just uh, just kicking the ball around till all hours at night. That was the thing that jumped out to me. The, the like, uh, almost, like... Uh... A love note almost for your childhood, as much as as much as football. Yeah, well, it was. It, 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 it um, I, I just tend to sit around, um, sort of, reflecting on things and put things down, and um, just came out, and I just sort of, you know, as you as you write any song, you just kind of work with it and you go with it, and all of a sudden, it takes you to a place where, uh, you just <laughs> you just want to be. At the moment, like you know, and and um, that's where it went, and it was it, it is like it, effectively this song is kind of me, um, in a in a three minute forty five second melody, um, because it kind of encapsulates, um, everything, uh, that I've experienced. Like my football has been my life; it's given me uh, all the opportunities that I've had in life. It's I've been very lucky, um, and I just felt that I I kind of maybe needed to put it into a song and. Ho I hope that a lot of people will maybe um, they'll reflect on it and it'll 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 draw on memories that, that people would have had, um, you know, during the eighties or nineties nineties or even the nineties when um, we didn't have very much else other than a football um, and uh, a 
few a few mates just to kind of kick a ball around, like you know. And um, I suppose it's it's um, like I say, it's just a very a very nostalgic look back at um, when I didn't have a care in the world. <laughs> yeah. I definitely uh, looked at that orange ball and had had thoughts of frosty <laughs> cold mornings and having the uh, the foot beaten off you, kicking that that thing before before it would warm up a bit. And uh, you know, it makes me feel like I'm about seventy four. But um, I'm, I'm actually try, I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think who would have made those balls, those sort of orange. I can't remember. Um, it was lit. Was written on a little plastic bit across. The, they must have been worth the fortune. They must have been. They probably retired. They probably retired at the end of the eighties or the early nineties and they're in Barbados or something like that. Did you wrote it by the sounds of things in the last twelve months, did you? I did, yeah. I think I wrote towards the end of last year, yeah. Um and um um I uh, kind of worked on it myself as well. I did, I did all the kind of production and mixing on it myself. Um so it, it probably isn't perfect by all stretches of the, uh, the imagination, but um I just kind of kept it tucked away and you know, you know, when you when you write something like this, that's kind of very very to your heart um and you get you get you tend to get a bit sensitive over these things and you know probably because it's about football and um you kind of want it to be uh, as best as you can be so I, I i got a little bit catchy with it and changed and things got in, in, in the end i just said you know i'll just keep it i'll just keep it stripped back as raw as raw as i can make it like you know it's very melancholic which is I, i'm as, as we spoke before Asian, that's me in a nutshell mm. melancholic i'm a happy sad yeah, congrats on the song, Stewie. It's class. And like, I wasn't around for the 80s. I know Adrian certainly was, but made me nostalgic for a time I wasn't around for. So uh, really, really good video. But uh, speaking to, to Hector or Huckagon in the paper review a couple of weeks ago, he was talking about the, the need to get kids out uh, exercising a bit more. And the video kind of almost hits home that, you know, nowadays kids can't do that. Um, and I guess with COVID, that's just the way life is at the moment. But, uh, you know, when you were a kid and you were, as you mentioned, the song playing out in Cedarwood, Cedarwood Road with uh, other street footballers like Wes Hulahan, like how important is that for, for someone's mental health? I mean, when you look back now uh, and, and see kids maybe today spending too much time on their screens and on their phones, uh, how important is it that kids kind of take a little aspects of, of uh, what your childhood was like in the 80s? You know what? It, 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 it's never more evident than it is now. Um, we didn't realize at the time um, what you know how good this was for us you know or how good this was for me even um i was effectively all i wanted to do was go out on the road you know um you'd, you'd uh, if you were off uh, as soon as you finished school you'd be you know you'd leg it home you'd be you'd grab the ball whoever whoever bought whatever ball you were using whether it was your mates or whether it was yours you know sometimes you'd, you'd, lo you'd lose balls so you'd have to get a ball from somewhere but um you'd be out on the road um from from day till night um, and the only gap would be um, being called in for your dinner, um, and you'd you know you'd wolf your dinner down and you'd be back out again, probably with indigestion for the next for the next hour or so. But you didn't really care. But also, what you were getting out of it, exactly, you were, you were you were just getting you, you were just getting so much exercise. Um, I, I I reflect on those times as, as being a time where I never had a care in the world. I didn't worry about anything, you know. And a lot of kids at that age. Um, don't shouldn't need to worry about anything, you know. It, that, that's that's part of, of of growing up, part of being a of being a child. You know, if you grow up in a happy home, um, that's you know, there's, there's, there shouldn't be that complication of worry um, or anxiety or any or the, whatever the case may be. Unfortunately, um, that is the case for some for some children at the moment, um, um, especially during this environment. But even if you weren't in this environment, there are certain household environments that. Um, uh, you know, kids grow up with with with, um, with that stress uh, in their life. So, being able to get out onto the road um, with your mates um, is hugely important. And I I I never realised it until much later on in life that you know what what I was doing was I was effectively practicing to be a professional footballer. And um, everything I did on the, on the road, even regardless of whether I was out on my own or I was out with my mates um, playing football, everything you did. Was a practice session? Was a training session? Was it was a was a technical session? You know, even things like uh, using the curb. You know, you 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 run along a pace and you 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 dink a ball up over the curb and you avoid the curb and that's like avoiding a sliding tackle. You know, or um um just practicing. Uh, we had in Cedarwood Road. There's a tree every every house, but every third or fourth house there's a tree and a pole with a gap about this much. Um, 
I can remember I can remember Norman Whiteside scoring that wonderful goal in the FA in the FA Cup final. Um, and I, you can notice this brilliant angle from behind Norman Whiteside where you see the you see the curve. And I remember going, how how does he how did he do that? It was ama- like it was amazing. What we didn't realize at the time was it it was just a you know it was just a fairly good curve on the ball, but the camera angle caught it in such a way that it, it looked like Roberto Roberto Carlos's free kick against France, um, that wonderful free kick. So I remember spending hours just going out to the road trying to curl the ball into the into the gap between the tree and the pole with my left foot. Like I was right footed and I ended up trying to do it with my left foot. So you were you were just doing what any other kid would do at the time. You were trying to emulate what 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 you were seeing on the TV. We weren't seeing that much of football on the TV, but you were trying to emulate that. You know, Diego Maradona in '86 is another one we scored against England. And um, you know, as Irish people, I think we were as chuffed as the Argentinians were. So you're you're you're, you're trying to you're trying to um, emulate that. I couldn't emulate Diego Maradona. <laughs> I really I realized fairly quickly I wasn't going to be that kind of player. So. Uh, um, I, I, I quickly changed, but the mental health side of it. Um, do you know what? I'm only. I mean, I'm in my forties now, and I'm only realizing now how um, how much I miss how much I miss my mates, my friends. You know, my core friends. The the the, the, the two guys that I that I grew up with, uh, Larkin and Christopher, my best mates uh, from Cedarwood Road. I just miss them, miss miss being with them. Like you know, miss having the banter with them, miss chatting with them. Just want to be around them, kicking a ball. It doesn't matter. If it's just against the wall, because every time we meet up, and everybody who's anybody will know this about their friends, and, and again, this this particular period in time is teaching us this: when you get together with your friends, and you've had a certain um, a certain background with them, you don't worry about anything else. You don't worry about the bills or your kids or, um, you know, or anything else. You just go back to that. You go back to that eight or nine, ten year old, don't you? And you just you have a bit of crack, you have a bit of banter, and um, I just miss that. I miss that. I miss that the most about everything. Can I just uh, as a follow on to that, a brief uh, one? Like, it's about almost finding the positives then in in, in tough times. Because I know we spoke to you before um, on off the ball about uh, rules rules of survival, one of your first songs, and uh, how you, I think you talked about retiring from football in 2010 amid the you know the financial collapse. Uh, and here you are writing another song, this time in, in the middle of a global pandemic. So uh, how important is it that this songwriting process for you is almost uh, a case of finding positives in tough times, really? Oh, I think that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what I do. I think um, um, all the songs I write are an attempt to find um, uh, the positives in, in, in life. I I tend to be quite... Um, uh, quite introverted person. I can be quite quiet. I can I, I can have no problems, you know, being up by myself for a long period of time. I, you know, um, and that's pre-pandemic stuff. And I I found during this pandemic, I've kind of gone into my shell a little bit. Um, and it's 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 like a um, it's kind of like survival mode, I suppose, more, rather than anything. I've got four kids, um, my wife as well. So I kind of felt I needed to kind of just shelter them. We we needed to focus on each other for um this particular period of time. So I've 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 um, kind of hunkered down a little bit. I think everyone's done the same. We've all sort of kind of dug in, hunkered down, um, and it's very little. It's very hard sometimes to try and reach out for positives. Trying to, it's very hard to remember what life used to be like when it was good. You know, it will come back, and we, you know, we know we know it's going to come back. But it's very difficult sometimes to see that coming. Um, so you have to try and. I suppose, from my point of view, I just try and imagine myself um, in 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 those positive situations again. And I suppose you, what you said is exactly true. It's it's a um, it might be fantasy because we can't go back in time. We can't go back to it again. But what we can try and do is we can when all this when all this settles down and comes to an end. I think what we can we can try and emulate it again and maybe create new memories. Just look forward to creating maybe new memories. Like you know, I mean, I, I know for one thing, when this all settles down, the v- one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to organise a weekly game of uh, five aside with, with, with my mates because I wouldn't have done that in the past. Like you know, um, but that's definitely number one on the on the on the bucket list. 
Yeah, well, look at um, it. Always, as always, it's a great catch up with you, Stewie, whether it's uh, football or music or whatever it might be. It's a beautifully uh, tender song, I have to say, and it definitely threw me back a little bit. And it struck me as you were talking about your preparation for every game was a preparation to be a professional footballer. I probably I was out just as much as yourself, and uh, it was never it was never going to happen for me. The, the practice sessions went in, but the game, the games never arrived. But uh, and I'm sure that's the, the vast majority of people's experience as well. People can check it out on uh, Spotify and uh, on YouTube as well. It's the game that we love. It's an absolute cracker and a pleasure as always. Stuart, look after yourself. Thanks, guys. Thanks, man. Talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Uh, Stuart Byrne on the line there. And uh, as I said, you can check that out in full and recommend that you do because I didn't have listened to it yesterday and uh, had to throw it on a few times. It's, uh, it's an absolute belter. YouTube and Spotify is the place to go and check that out.